Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, still doing our pandemic projects. Unfortunately, we're going on week eight here in uh, the Northeast. It's been a tough road. And uh, thanks to all who are uh, working the front lines of this, trying to keep us safe. We're finally starting to see some positive trends here in terms of uh, infection rates and uh, the like. So thank you for all you do. Uh, today we're going to take on a, uh, a Fluger. It's the Fluger Akron. Akron, interestingly enough, is where Fluger was headquartered. So uh, if you wondered why they had a, a version of a real called Akron, it was simply the town that they were headquartered out of. Uh, Ernest Fluger was the founder and he had four sons. And uh, sometimes you'll see these come up uh, in a couple of different ways. You'll see a Four Brothers brand, you'll see the Atlas uh, Portage brand, a whole bunch of trade names, but uh, this one's actually branded under uh, Fluger. And um, you've seen me in the past take some of these small reels apart. They're beautiful reels, well engineered, and uh, suitable for, uh, for fishing today. Uh, they're knuckle busters, there's no, uh, no backdrop, so uh, as you cast, uh, you better keep your hand off of the side. That's why they call it the knuckle buster. If you're throwing your line and you're not paying attention, you're gonna get whacked in there. And there's a, uh, in this case, there's a little break on here that uh, is used to control backlash, an anti-backlash feature. But other than that, it's a, a pretty simple design. And uh, John sent this one in, and uh, we're gonna just go tune it up for him. So uh, you notice that I do all kinds of crazy reels. It's just kind of fun. I appreciate the mechanics behind it. And uh, if, you, uh, if you happen to have a crazy reel out there that you, uh, you don't want to open up, you don't want to work on, and uh, you want somebody to tune it up for you, well, uh, there's a contact uh, card at the end of this uh, broadcast. I'd be happy to work on it for you. So uh, let's start by taking some stuff off. We're going to take the handle off. That's a beautiful plastic uh, handle to this reel. Beautiful German silver with the engraving on it. I, I would date this reel probably to 40s or 50s. Uh, I'm sure uh, with a little bit of research I could find out some more. I'm also using a, uh, a micro screwdriver. These slots on these screws here are uh, pretty small. So uh, use the right tool for the job. Don't, uh, don't try and use something that's too small on a big screw and vice versa. Now, of course, on this, this reel, if you have a screw blade that's uh, not appropriate for the screw, you're not going to be able to get the blade in there, but kind of like don't use pliers and things like that. We all kind of know that. What should you use? Well, this is a good start, right? It's a plastic uh, glove that I use. Let's see if we can take that off. No, we have to take those two small screws off. Um, I protect my hand as much as possible. I don't like to get the greases and and uh, foreign elements, whatever you want to call that stuff, that uh, tends to contaminate reels. I uh, try to keep that off as much as possible. Also, a uh, little parts tray. Also, filming. You'll, you'll notice we're filming this, and that tells me what the uh, sequences that I took this stuff off on and how to put it back together in case I've forgotten. One, two, three, four, five. Three long, two short screws. Now the case should come off, and it does. These are simple direct drive reels. There's nothing really fancy about this stuff here. You have a, uh, a spool that uh, we'll take out in a moment. It has a gear that's on the spool. You have a direct drive gear here, and you have the drive gear that goes into the uh, uh, the level wind gear. I don't know. I think we're going to probably wind up. See. You'll see it here, and we'll make sure that we lube both of these. These are bone dry. You can kind of see that going on here. Here's your worm gear, and uh, we might as well just go ahead and take that out while we're at it, too. So there's a pawl, and you want to make sure that you, uh, you service the pawl as part of the general service. So one more time with this micro screwdriver. And I'm trying to keep that cap on there. I don't know if I'll be able to. I can. All right, yay. Uh, and then we should be able to just wind this off and out. Okay. All right, so this is the, the core case. And we have some junk behind it, so you want to take that, uh, that main gear off and you want to clean it as best you can. I'm going to start with a paper towel. Yep, that's all that was really needed there. And a cotton swab here. Let's see if we can't get the grease that's fallen behind it. Clean all that up. 
Yeah, so John sent me a couple of reels, and uh, I do repair reels by mail. So if you uh, if you have one that happens to be a favorite, maybe it was even uh, a, a first reel you received, or uh, maybe it was your dad's reel or your grandfather's reel or something like that, and you want to preserve it and, and uh, do the best you can to keep it going, uh, but you don't want to tackle it yourself, by all means, uh, shoot me a note, and uh, I would be happy to do that for you. Uh, all right, so this is clean. This is nothing much that we need to do here. We're going to start reassembly then. I'm going to start by servicing the pole. And the, I left that little screw on there because me and little screws don't get together. Uh, there is a pole here. You want to put some oil in that. It was functioning fine, so you don't need to take that out necessarily. Uh, but if you were running into trouble with this, let's say it got stuck on one side or another, uh, that's usually a death knell for these Dawn uh, reels because parts are not available any longer. You can imagine the reel is 60, 70, 80 year, years old now. Um, so when going to purchase one, make sure that uh, the reel is complete and that it's working. Otherwise, uh, just purchase it on the assumption that it doesn't. A lot of these reels were made. A lot of these reels have wound up in flea markets and the like. They're relatively inexpensive. But most of the time you find them in a flea market. It's uh, not because somebody was doing a clean out. It's because something broke and uh, kind of spelled the end of it. All right, we're going to clean the inside of this too while we're at it. There's a channel here on that, uh, that little shield, so let's make sure we get all of that out of there. If you had some stubborn stuff, uh, go ahead and spray it down with uh, uh, WD-40 or something to break that up. And then just put a little bit of grease onto the side there. Now, I don't grease the channels. I put oil in here. I don't grease the channels because that grease tends to uh, to dry up over time and when it starts drying up you know, all it does is clog as opposed to lubricate. And while I have this out I'm just going to clean off some of the dirt here on the side plates just to make sure it's in good condition. We'll take the spool side off in a moment but right now we're just going to work on this side. To make sure when you reinstall you put that line guide back in the slot. Like that. All right, small gear. Check to make sure all the teeth are uniform, not bent or chipped. Go ahead and put a little bit here and a little bit there. You don't have to put it all over the place. A little bit on the back of it. And this is a square hole, so make sure that uh, when you're putting it back together, you have it seated properly. There we go. You can see how it, it'll fit there. And then a little bit of grease on the front where that stud is going to ride in the case. Again, there's a little bit of junk on the case, so let's get that off of there. And we will put a little bit of grease in there. And here's your, your um, little adjuster. You'll notice it's ramped up. And the ramping up is what's going to cause the, the tension as it rides on this little guy. And this little guy is actually a stud that's going to ride on the spool. You'll see this when we, uh, when we take the spool out from the other side. OK, so we've greased the small gear. Let's grease the big gear. We're doing the same thing here, right? We're checking the teeth, making sure they're all uniform and clean, and they are. Put a little bit on the back side. A couple of dots here and there. You don't need much. It doesn't have to be in every tooth. So we'll just go ahead and put that right back on, and we're going to mesh that. And you can give it a drive. Just to make sure it's turning nicely. And you can see it is, and you can see that the, the line guide is turning nicely as well. Okay, so we can just uh, reinstall now. We're going to put this piece back in. And you can see after all these years, the silvering is still holding up well. There's a little indentation up here. You need to make sure that that cap sits in the indentation. And we'll come back on this side. Let's clean that up while we have it off the reel. And we can go ahead and put that back on. Then we'll put those screws back in. Three long, two short. So 
remember to sequence them where they came from. I'm getting blinded by the the uh, the light here. It's I uh, get a beautiful reflection off that silver from that overhead light. It's shooting right in my eyes like a mirror. So nice, nice reel. All right, one, here's two. I can hardly wait for the small ones. So this reel is typical of the 50s, 40s, 50s. It was actually designed, the first of these reels was designed by William Shakespeare all the way back in the 1900s, early 1900s, like zero, zero. Uh, I forget if it was 1898 or 1902 when he got his patent. And they really didn't change much. They were copied by an awful lot of folks, just improving the design a little bit here, a little bit there. But I guess patenting and the like was not quite the same thing as it is today, where you can pretty much patent everything, including type styles and the like, right? Uh, they, were, they were more uh, open to uh, copying back then. All right, let's, uh, I need to center the hole on this just a little bit. And those two small screws, we'll try and get those in. Those of you that know me know that me and small screws don't get along very well. But there's one. Surprise, surprise. And let's put the other one on. Then I'm going to go over to the back side of this reel. So you'll find this. You'll find uh, this is a Fluger. Like I mentioned, you can find an Atlas uh, Portage. You can find a whole bunch of reels. I believe the, the style of this reel was called a Kentucky reel. Could be a little bit wrong in that, but there was a whole host of manufacturers in the 20s, 30s, 40s in, in and around Frankfurt, Kentucky, making uh, fishing reels like this. Look at this, huh? John, you got a beautiful reel here. Uh, and those, uh, those folks in Kentucky uh, shared a lot of uh, technologies between them. So, of course, this is Ohio, not far from, but. Uh, Kentucky, nonetheless, uh, was the, the epicenter, if you will, in those early days for this uh, type of reel. All right, we're going to take these off. By the way, if you want to learn more on those kinds of old reel history, there's a, there's a society out there, for lack of a better term, called ORCA, Old Reel Collectors Association. And uh, the, uh, they have a lot of information on fishing reels, things that... Uh, well, they have kind of have a catalog of almost every reel that was ever made and where it was made. Uh, I got a call the other day from, I believe it was Charlie, telling me he had an Abercrombie and Finch reel. Well, I'm old, but I'm not that old. I didn't quite remember where it, uh, ever seeing one of them. And uh, I went to the Orca site and found out that uh, the Abercrombie and Finch reels were made in the, uh, up through about 1957. But the Abercrombie and Fitch A&F catalog was actually made all the way back in 1917. So, whether they made them or they were a trade reel, like uh, we're talking about here with the way Fluger uh, uh, manufactured for others, uh, I'm not sure. But So we just wanted to remove the entire assembly there. Now we can pull the side plate off. Now we can pull the uh, the spool off. You'll see that this is an integral part. Well, the rub here on this is from this little stud here, and that's what's being controlled by the arm over here. That little adjuster I was telling you about before, it's actually pushing this piece out and that's controlling the little tension on the rubber knob over here which is controlling the spool cast. So backlash was a key issue in the, uh, the design of reels early on and that's what every manufacturer was trying to overcome. How do you come up with an anti-backlash? device. And we saw one the other day when I did that uh, Red River one. It actually had a, uh, a little fence in the uh, front end of this 
uh, to solve uh, to try and solve that issue. Uh, so you'll find different uh, different mechanisms there from that uh, that anti backlash series. And interestingly enough, the uh, the one that solved it all was Shakespeare again. Uh, not Shakespeare. I'm sorry. Uh, it was Zebco, uh, and Zebco solved it by having that free flowing uh, fixed spool design come in. But of course, that's not the bait feeder that we're working on here. All right, now we're going to put this back together. Again, I have those long screws in my box. I was probably a little bit reckless here in putting the two small screws on my desk, but uh, we'll, we'll come back to those. So a nice reel all around. John, you have a treasure here. I hope you put it back fishing. These are fun. You, you know, people have looked at them and say it's a simple design. Uh, it can't be any good. Well, wrong. Uh, uh, these were darn good, and they were certainly uh, um, well used and continue to be used all these years later. A testament to the design of the reel itself. All right, I'm just tightening these down now, and then we'll put that uh, assembly back in. And if I stumbled on the assembly before, I don't. Uh, I didn't have the schematic. Sometimes you just have to use your intuition to try and figure out which way it's going. And uh, my apologies if that looked unprofessional, but uh, I'm never claiming to be that anyway. So just claiming to be an average guy who just likes taking wheels apart, tinkering around, and putting them back together again, making them work, giving them a second chance. That's the whole notion behind second chance tackle. So while I have this minute, a shout out to all of the first responders that are out there that uh, continue to watch this for uh, some kind of uh, enjoyment uh, in between those difficult tasks that they're involved in on a day-to-day -day basis with this pandemic. A sincere thank you to all. Okay, we're going to, uh, to grab this now. We're going to reinsert. You want to make sure that you're back in here. I'm going to line this up. I'm going to go grab those, uh, those little screws. I think I need a centering pin here. Sometimes you have to be a jeweler, and surprisingly enough, yeah. First fishing reels were made by people who were clockmakers. Go figure. I can completely understand that. They had the the knowledge of mechanical prowess and how to uh, how to design something that uh, kind of works and works seamlessly and works efficiently and works well. Okay, so we're back here again. Now we want to. Uh, I want to make sure that we're in the, the square of the, the gear. We have to put the hold fast back on. Now we greased that earlier. So let's get the screw back in here. Uh, we weren't grabbing the, the threads. Don't force anything when you're working with these things. You have plenty of time. There we go. Just sometimes it just takes a while. Just be patient. just have the two screws to put back into this side. So let's go ahead and do that, then we'll give it a test drive and then we'll send it on to John. One down, one to go. So that's it. If you have a, uh, a Fluger Akron, you now know a little bit about the history of the reel. You certainly know a little bit more about the 
history of reels like these. And uh, more importantly, you know how to tune this one up, clean it up, put it back into shape, and look at that, huh? How nice. How nice. There you go. All right. This reel's ready to go fishing again. So with that, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching. Please stay safe and stay well. Stay listening to our authorities out there and asking uh, if you are quarantined like we are here, that uh, you continue to remain vigilant in everything you do. And uh, there will be a time when we get back out on the water again. So thank you for watching. Have a great day.